What's up sim racers? Today we're going to be doing the full review of the AO Logs Project Sequential Shifter and i uh, got a ton of great things to say about this thing so let's get right on into it. All right. All right sim racers so now we're going to go ahead and jump into what you get in the box for this uh, AO Logs project sequential shifter uh, we're gonna do what's in the box some features my first impressions some great things about this which are a lot of them actually uh, a couple things I would like to see and some comparisons to other shifters as well because I know I will get several questions about it and uh, hopefully I can answer those ahead of time for you but uh, yeah so you know what you get in the box is you get a dismount clamp very sturdy one at that you get a couple rubber pieces that go onto the bottom of the shifter itself uh, which will keep you from marring up your desk uh, if you were to mount it on top of your desk stalls like that and you get another rubber one that goes on the desk clamp itself to keep you from marring up underneath your desk and of course you get a USB cable so that's what you get in the box oh and Obviously, the shifter, <laughs> uh, the mounting plate here, which I already have installed on here, uh, which you can install this, you know, in a horizontal or vertical way as well as underneath on these two holes if you want it to. Uh, of course, the shift rod and the shift knob. So that's actually what all you get in the box. Uh, what this is made out of, is features-wise, is this is all stainless steel construction. Uh, three millimeter uh, plate here, five millimeter mounting bracket here. Uh, the desk clamp is also a five mil uh, desk clamp, all stainless steel stuff. Actually, the only thing that's carbon steel on here would be this little uh, bolt and, and the swivel piece to help make it uh, secure underneath your desk and the, uh, the nuts. Everything else appears to be stainless steel. What great stainless, I'm not sure. I would imagine for cost effectiveness, for my engineering background would be, this is probably 301 uh, stainless steel or 304. 301 being a little bit less expensive, depending on when you buy it and how much quantity you buy this stuff in. But uh, yeah, all laser cut and looks to be hand ground. Uh, edges here you can tell the kind of more hand ground because some of them are not quite as precise in these little corners uh, this one's flared down a little bit more than say this particular corner here is a lot more sharp uh, just kind of in the same here a little bit uh, more uh, shaved or sanded down there so you can, I just kind of usually telltale signs for me as far as it's being hand uh, ground down, but it doesn't matter. It's deburred, uh, so it's it looks great. It doesn't cut you. Uh, very smooth radius deburring, so uh, real good, high quality, high quality kit here actually. Um, now, like I mentioned, this mounting bracket can be mounted in several different ways. Generally, uh, sim equipment like this is generally catered to people that run 80-20 rigs uh, so it's impossible for them to probably or not even cost effective for them to make a mounting bracket solution that may work on your RC or your Simitech K2 or your Abuto or your GT Omega and all these different combinations and stuff instead they uh, most companies will make a mounting bracket that works to fit their system in different ways and then give you some options for like 80-20. And then you of course can drill out this plate if you need it to to fit your situation. Now, if you follow me, you know I love my K2 uh, Semitech rig, or Semitic rig, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, I mount this straight up in this horizontal way to these two bolt holes right here. It works perfectly. It uh, doesn't move around on me, very rigid. I'm using the mounting plate that's on there. Uh, I have usually my handbrake right in front and uh, this on the outside and I actually had my HE uh, shifter on the inside uh, still mounted up on there. And I'm running a big transducer uh, or a butt kicker 
on there as well. So I get a lot of vibrations through this kit. And uh, this one actually uh, gives you really good feedback as far as the vibrations go, uh, being that it's all stainless construction, which is, is nice. I didn't think I would feel that, but I actually, I certainly like it because uh, just like when you're in a real car, you feel the vibrations in your shifter. Uh, you do as well in this one. It's not buffed by anything rubber or plastic inside here. So all stainless steel construction. Um, you have a very nice acrylic uh, top plate. And uh, it's not a cheap plastic plate like some people use. Uh, cheap plastic, you'll generally over time, you will uh, get dust on it, obviously. And when you go to clean the dust off, if you were to do it in a dry situation instead of wetting it first, uh, you tend to scratch uh, the surface of it. He gets a lot of surface scratches and stuff. This I haven't experienced that at all, so that's it's definitely a little bit higher quality. I haven't experienced any surface scratching on it, so I like that. The older models had a stainless, all one piece stainless cover on it. Uh, now they went to an open, open look, which I like. And uh, when you plug in the power, it has a nice little red, red uh, light inside there that kind of illuminates in there, which looks pretty cool actually. Uh, on your rig especially if you're like me and do a lot of driving uh with the lights off and stuff so yeah real nice um you know other things as far as features go is it's plug and play uh and and a, and a very tactile feeling as well as as you know the various mounting options that i gave you now let's get into you know the uh first impressions of this before I get too sidetracked on things. First of, all, first of all, when you go grab this thing, you set it up on your rig. Uh, when you grab a shift, it's very solid feeling. I mean, you hear that. Very solid. And it's around three kilograms of pull, okay? Uh, so when you first get this in hand, you're like, okay, this is a substantial piece of equipment. Feels very well built. There's no side play. I mean, it's nothing. There's no side play in the shifter. Everything is mounted perfectly together. Uh, there's nothing wiggling loose, so to speak, unless you're like me with a transducer on your rig, and I will wiggle this bottom piece loose. Uh, so you can fix that easily with putting on a little bit of strip of Teflon tape or some blue Loctite will keep it down there in place as well. But um, uh, yeah, it's just nothing cheap in here. So everything feels precise, tightly toleranced, and you get that feeling, uh, when you grab the shifter, how tightly tolerant it is. So, you know, and it's got a really heavy spring to it. Like I said, three kilograms, which is around six and a half pounds, uh, of, of force. So it's, uh, on par with, with, uh, some of the other high end, uh, shifters, uh, sequential shifters. And, um, with a short throw, which I really like. I don't like a long throw, I like a short throw. So uh, very good. So let's get into some of the great things about it. You know, because first impressions is, is man, this thing is solid. Built like a tank, uh, well constructed, nothing moving around on you, nothing sounding like it's coming apart under use. And I've been beating this thing for a week and a half now on all the various Sims and uh, it's held up great. First of all, cost of this thing is $165. So yeah, it's it's priced really well for what you get. And uh, it's actually pretty good that they're getting the price down that low. I think this day and age for cost of materials and stuff has gone up quite a bit, especially with tariffs and, and all that stuff going on in the economy. So um, yeah, it's priced really well. And then, you know, it's a compact design, but you know, compact to, it doesn't feel like it fits in your pocket, but, uh, you, you know, substantial enough that, you know, it's got some weight to it, feels great in your hand. It, it's not, it doesn't feel like a toy. You know, one of the first things you end up doing, uh, when, if you have a sports car or something besides exhaust systems, uh, nowadays exhaust sound pretty good, but, um, is you update the shifter. So like back in my, uh, Cobra days when I had the, uh, the Cobra Mustang and the GT Mustangs and stuff, I updated to a B&M Ripper shifter. And the reason you did that is because the stock shifter felt very 
uh, soft, like you're driving around a Civic or something. Uh, very soft bump stops. The stops on the bump when you shift were soft. Uh, when you went to, say, the aftermarket shifter is hard. It's a very hard shift. You felt when you clanked it into gear and you heard that tactile feel when you hit against a solid metal uh, stop, which are usually adjustable stops on, on, on aftermarket shifters. Uh, that's what you get on this. So, you know, people wonder like, why do you need a sequential shifter? You don't, you, you don't have to have one. You can use your paddle shifters all day long, but it adds to the immersion. And then, uh, when you add that to getting such a hard positive feel on it, uh, it just kicks it up a notch. Uh, so yeah, this, I do actually recommend a good solidly built shifter like this. This AOLogs actually does it does a, a really good job of how it feels in hand and I do a lot of VR racing so I'm not necessarily looking at the pretty uh, shifter but I want precise shifts when I'm doing it and I want to be able to reach for it grab it shift and know that I'm going to hit my shifts and this thing does not disappoint uh, as far as that goes uh, and, and you know if you're doing some uh, out of the box or out of the VR experiences you got a nice polished um, shifter now let's get into the shifter real quick further into it here the top one being aluminum and it's a polished aluminum long thread I tend to drop it <laughs> sorry uh, but it has some scratches on it and stuff uh, not that it came out of the box that way it's just for me dropping it or being a little uh, careless with it but being that it's polished aluminum I can polish it out more and uh, you know, or if you have rings on or whatever, you're gonna uh, uh, scratch it a little bit, but you can polish it up. Looks brand new again. So that's a nice feature. Another nice feature, people <clears throat> tend to forget about quality and, and they go for what's the cheapest price. Well, you pay a little bit more for things for higher quality, which surprisingly you don't pay a lot more for quality in this case. Uh, but being that this is a solid piece of aluminum um, see what size is this? This is, let me measure it for you. If I can hold on to it guys, uh, 34 millimeter round and 60 tall. So that's, it's a good size actually. I could stand for it to be a little bit bigger myself for my hands, but, um, I actually think it's a very good compromise as far as uh, picking an optimal size and the roundness of it uh, feels good in your hand. It's not sharp, say, like some of these aftermarket ones like this, where this one, when I tend to use it and I push it, it digs into my palm of my hand after a while. I end up getting a callus on my hand from hitting it from downshifts from using it so much. That's how, how much I use sequential shifters. And... Uh, being that this one's more rounded, uh, it's a very, more, it's a more comfortable when I hit my downshifts. It's a lot more comfortable feel, which I really like. Uh, so that's, for me, it's a pretty good size. Uh, bigger can be better, <laughs> uh, but this is probably as small as I would go with that. So I like it. But yeah, this is a solid piece of aluminum, machined out. The threads are machined in there. Uh, if, if if you could see in that hole. You would be able to see that this is just drilled out aluminum and threaded, uh, you know, obviously afterwards. Uh, so, yeah, just one solid billet piece. So, love it. Love it a lot. Uh, the shifter rod, let me get this off. Oh, I must have tightened it down good earlier. I was going to say one of my complaints is that the rod has a hard time coming off. That's probably because I added a little bit of Teflon tape, but what happens is when you go grabbing shifts, when you're pulling it to you with this, you, you, you're you pulling it the way that it tightens, right? So you tend to tighten things up. This, once it's on here, it doesn't really want to come off because it's machined exact. It fits flush against here. It tightens down. It doesn't ever come off. Even with downshifts, when I'm banging downshifts, I'll tend to plastic handles and stuff, I'll tend to start loosening them up. 
you need Loctite or something to hold them down. This one, I don't have that problem at all, which I like. However, I do tend to loosen up the base of it. And a lot of that is attributed to the fact that I use transducers all over and I'm using a, uh, a motion rig as well. So there's a lot of vibrations that this thing gets hit with. And it's actually held up great. Nothing's come loose on it uh, besides that uh, this will get a little bit loose. I'm sorry, this side will get a little bit loose in here and I'll have to tighten it up. Now I have fixed that with just adding a little bit of Teflon tape. And uh, for now, I think going forward, I'm probably just going to put a little, little, uh, a little bit of blue anti, uh, uh, Loctite, a little bit of blue Loctite. I wouldn't use red. Uh, it gets on there too tight and uh, it's harder to break off, but a little blue on there and that'll keep it from uh, vibrating loose. But Teflon tape works real good too. Uh, but yeah, good quality stuff there. Let's set that down, you know, and also speaking of quality, this, you know, not a lot of people talk about table clamps and stuff, but this actual table clamps is done really well being that it's this fork design slides in the bottom here like so. And, um, it's mounted really good. So the screws that come with it are these two screws here that I have in the plate and the side mounting plate, uh, they already come in this uh, desk clamp, right? You'll have to pull them out and replace these button socket head cap screws with the longer ones that come in your handle to hold this five mil uh, plate to through this three millimeter uh, housing and of course into its threads, which is this bar here. Uh, no big deal. You got all the screws you need, but you know you may try to use the shorter ones, and you'll sh you're quickly discover you can't grab a thread in there because they are a little bit too short. So you want to use the longer ones out of here. Just you know, word of note how how things go. Uh, but yeah, you got everything you need. Uh, and of course, obviously you can mount it on this side, you can mount it on the other side, and like I said earlier, you can mount it on the bottom as well. So a lot of options. Uh, being that this thing is so sturdy, it's it's. Like I said, it's all metal, and then this is stainless around the edges and stuff. But uh, it doesn't move on you at all, which I really like. Um, and you know what? I've done this video like three or four times already, so I may have talked about this already, thinking I talked about it in another video. So excuse me if I'm covering this again. But yeah, uh, I like it. A lot of attention to detail to this actual table clamp itself. Uh, it shouldn't go unrecognized because it is actually really good. I myself won't use it in my situation, but if I need to in the future, I'm glad I have it because it's something I can trust is not going to move around on me. And uh, so just make sure you keep your original screws uh, so you can put them back in the original plate and stuff. So, you know, put it in a little baggie or something for safekeeping down the road. All right, so uh, looking into this thing, and I'll throw up a video of this being assembled. I'm not going to take this one apart. It's it's pretty simple, actually, as far as how it comes apart. Side plates come off. Everything just folds off. Top plate off. Bottom plate off. Uh, they all fit in their own little grooves that you see here. Uh, so everything just laser cut, precise machining uh, without anything moving around. Of course, secured down with bolts and stuff. But you got a little um, big tab in here as far as where your spring, you can see the spring right there, sets against it. Big heavy duty spring right there. Uh, and then of course on this side, there's another uh, a metal or, or stainless uh, ring, which actually is threaded for a screw on the inside. And that's where the other part of the spring. So, you know, it's a condensed design that they thought of like hey i'll go ahead and secure these side plates together uh with this one and then you know what i'll position this spring and this in such a way that it will utilize these rods to uh have its uh it stops right so you know well thought out actually i think uh it also has two little ball bearings in there and that actually gives you that tactile sound uh, when you make the shifts and stuff so it feels good and it sounds good uh, probably only con or one of the cons of that is that it's loud and uh but if it's too loud you're too old man so anyway uh 
Yeah, that's the only thing is it, it makes a little bit louder sound. It's probably one of the noisiest uh, on my rig. Uh, actually, paddle shifters on, on most wheels are pretty loud too. And uh, this one's right up there with it. So not a big deal for me. Uh, but if you have someone uh, trying to ha you know talk or something next to you, they're going to hear that clicking. But anyway, it is what it is. But it sounds good. And to me, that sound is, is helps give you that feedback of, uh, of the feel that you're feeling. So I actually like to hear it. Uh, it's a plus to me. But nice cam motion in there. Everything's secured really well uh, inside. Nothing rattling loose. Even with all my transducers going, I got seven of them on my rig. And nothing has came loose out of this thing. So built, built like a tank, right? So the only things, and you know what? And let's put this thing back together. As far as rods go, you'll see the threads. Shorter thread on one side, longer on the other. Long thread is for the handle itself. Short threads are for... The unit being, the reason being is that you see inside there, so if I can catch it with the light, I can't really quite catch, there it is right there, that little rod going through there. Uh, the long threaded in will hit that rod and this will not secure all the way tight down to it. Uh, so it is specific which way you put it in there. Works both ways, still work, but you won't get that tight, secure uh, filling which means then it'll get loose then right so but you know another way they could fix that is they could this lexan plate they could make it a wider cut out and put a screw down there and uh, use that to uh, uh, tighten up kind of like the Husenfeld one does it doesn't look that good though when you do that but so I kind of like the option of just using some Loctite but uh, anyway that's what you get so Shorty in first, long threaded one on top for your handle. Threads in nice. And you will see here at the bottom how focus here. Let's see if I can get it to focus, but in there you can see how flush it gets against it. So very well machined. Uh, listen to this thing real quick. So, you know, about travel. The travel is very short. It's only about 10 degrees, it looks like. Uh, just looking in the camera, 10, 15 degrees or so. Um, but pretty short shifts compared to, say, like the Fanatic is a really long shift. Uh, the um, It's very positive feeling, like I said. It, it's like putting an aftermarket shifter in your car. You feel that tactile shift. And when you hear the sound, the click, at the very end, no sound, no sound, shift is registered when you actually hear that sound. So it's not like the uh, registration of the shift is when you just start to barely move it. No, it doesn't. It's got to make that click to uh, push the button to make the shift and it's a it's a joystick a and b uh, windows recognizes it perfectly fine uh, so you could literally mount it this way or you can mount it this way you just select which one you want a and b this this could be down shifts this way and up shifts this way or vice versa right i have it like this myself because i like to keep the plugs going away from me not coming to me but depending on your situation and how you want to mount it wouldn't matter so good versatility there all right, so the feel of this thing is just awesome, right? The only thing I would say, let's get into, uh, uh, you know what? One of the great thing also as well I wanted to talk about was the USB. And I uh, probably talked about this on one of my other videos I discounted on submitting. <laughs> but uh, this used to be internal to here. Uh, now they have an external plug, which I actually like a lot better. Uh, reason being is these tend to wear out after a while uh, from you rerouting them through your rig and uh, you, you tend to uh, uh, wear them out, right? So when it was wired internally, you would have to take one side off and, and replace it. That's a pain in the butt. Plus it tends to get a lot more pressure on the little gusset that goes around here. 
and uh, tend to start wearing out the wires just from you moving it around, putting it in your rig. Once you got it mounted, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. But that is also another issue is if you have one that's attached all the time, you got this wire to contend with when you're trying to mount things up to a rig, which becomes a pain. Now you don't have that, which I think is a huge plus. Plus, I can replace the wire, uh, the cable, if I need to, in a pinch uh, to diagnose problems. Oh, maybe it's my cable wire is going out. You know, it, it happens, right? So that's actually a, a great plus. I like that. Uh, now let's get into a couple things that I would see as far as people may want, and that is uh, the rod length. I think they actually picked a really good rod length here. And I've seen some old pictures of rod lengths maybe being longer or shorter. Um, shorter gives you a little bit more torque filling on it. And longer is, is of course, obviously going to make it weaker because your lever force is much higher up. If you're grabbing it up here, uh, you're going to have a lot more leverage and it's not going to be as much force needed. As you get down the base, if you were to grab it down here and make a shift, requires quite a bit more force to make that shift. Uh, this is a good compromise, a good length, uh, I think, as far as what will be happy, a happy medium for most people, right? So pretty good length, but we like to tinker. So <laughs> I grabbed a couple of my Husenfeld ones here, which are a lot shorter. Uh, if you were to put that one on there, short end in, long end out, uh, it, it would be, well, it'd be something like this, right? Quite a bit shorter. And that actually does increase a lot of the torque. And I could use an angled one as well, but I wanted this shifter to be further back towards me. So it would be nice if they had a couple of these as an option, kind of like the Husenfeld one has, uh, just for you to increase the, uh, the torque on it as well as maybe changing the angle you know for their price point 165 dollars i would make this like an option uh in there for people to buy if they want to you know another maybe 15 dollars option to to have a couple of short rod and an angled short rod something like that uh because that would be you know it just adds options you know once you get the unit in shipped in from from overseas um you know you don't want to go back and order these. They would probably sell these a lot just because once they have them in hand or the customer has it in hand, they're just you know, they're going to use it. They're going to try them out. Uh, and if they don't like them, they won't use them. So these are nice options. It actually uh, increased the torque a little bit when I used the shorter one. I didn't try the angled one uh, just because how this is on my rig. I think the straight up and down is perfect. However, I would not go longer than the rod that they have here because it's going to weaken uh, the feel that you get into your hands is weaken the torque. This is right now is around three kgs of torque. That's uh, so around six and a half uh, foot pounds. So it's just about right, I think. And you know, couple that with a very smooth engagement. Love it. Now I'll go ahead and post up videos here in the side, uh, somewhere in the bottom or something, of me rowing gears through certain games. Now, what games it works for? It works with any. USB uh, type game. So it works. I tested it with the Forza 7, uh, Forza Horizon. No, I didn't test it for Forza Horizon 4, just Forza 7. No reason why it won't work for Forza Horizon 4. This is on PC, obviously. Um, I test with uh, Project Cars 2, Race Room, R Factor, iRacing. It works with all of them. Uh, R Factor 2 is kind of nice because you can use paddle shifters and you can set uh, this up as an alternate shift. So you could have both of them going at the same time if you wanted to. Uh, same when you're switching around from, uh, say, a Formula One car to, you know, uh, an old school car or something like that. But I use sequentials a lot because to me it, it makes me feel like I'm in a real car. And, uh, you know, when I use this one here, I'm thinking, man, why don't these guys make an H pattern shifter? Because they're so good at doing this one, uh, making it uh, feel so right in your hand that they, sh man, they should make an H pattern shifter because I think they would uh, really knock it out of the park with that. So anyway, just a little suggestion, guys. <laughs> All right, so let, let me get into wrapping this up. You know, the only thing, 
there really isn't a con as you can tell there's really no cons to this only con is that this thing vibrates a little bit loose nothing they could do about that besides offering you a nut uh, to tighten it down from backing out which means they would just thread this rod a little bit longer and open up this face that's the only thing i could see them do for an improvement if they did that i hope they would use a stainless steel nut in there uh to keep it nice and clean and shiny uh so instead of like a or a black nut to match the ones that they have on here uh but yeah that would be it uh, it doesn't have an attention ad tension adjustment, but like I said, you would adjust it uh, with higher and, and lower in a rod if you want something higher torque. Uh, I like a lot of tension for my shifts, but I think this is pretty dang good. Uh, by far, this is actually the most, uh, well, it's kind of the, it's the best sequential shifter I've used yet as far as being precise, but it's the most exciting one I've used because of how it makes you feel when you make the shifts. It has a very tactile, just a tactile feeling, a uh, very positive feeling, that hard indention. So I really love it. Uh, when we compare this now, let's go on a comparison here real quick to try to wrap up this video. It's already 30 minutes into it, right? Uh, comparison with other shifters. Let's grab the Fanatic. You'll notice my rod is missing off the Fanatic. That's because I literally snapped it off because I was trying to get the H pattern to work and there's a problem with it not recognizing what gear I was in. And I guess out of frustration of trying to get it to register a gear, I snapped the damn rod off. So anyway, when you look at the comparison wise, sequential wise, the force that you get out of this one is pretty actually equivalent to what I feel, uh, remember feeling in the Fanatic as far as the pull goes. Uh, the difference is, is the Fanatic is a lot longer throw, and this is also dubs as an H pattern, hence why it's so dang big. So if you don't have an H pattern on this one, you know, you can make it smaller, which I like. Uh, I, I think they can make an H pattern uh, on out of this one, and it wouldn't be much bigger uh, and more streamlined design than what maybe this Fanatic one is. But... Uh, as far as which one I prefer to use, I prefer to use the AO Logs uh, one because it gives me a more positive feel. Uh, and the reason that being is when I pull it, I feel like I'm hitting more of a metal stop uh, with that click sound as well. But even not even hearing it because you usually have headphones on, right? I just feel like I have, I feel a more positive stop where on the fanatic it has a good force but you don't your your bump stop is more of a uh a softer feel so you don't have that metal the metal feel like you would have in an aftermarket shifter uh so that's why i prefer this one plus it's a lot smaller fits on my rig takes up a lot less space i uh, really appreciate that that's that comparison right uh next one is husenfeld it's the only other one i'll compare it to as far as force goes, these are actually really similar. This one's a little harder to hold in my hand, but uh, the throw is, a, is pretty close to the same as this one. Let me see. See how far that goes? About the same. So it's, it's pretty close to the same throw. The force is about the same. This is just a smaller unit than that. Uh, but the difference as far as what you feel is this still, even though it has a pretty, it has a hard stop, but it's almost softer. It's almost like a, a knuckle just hitting another knuckle or something. It, it, it doesn't have that sound, uh, which is fine. Uh, but it's actually a pretty good shifter, but I actually prefer the AO logs one more because when I hit the stop, it this the feel of this is a little bit different. It's hard to explain the feel, but the feel is like you're hitting something rubbery inside. Still hard rubber, but it has a little bit of a, a soft feel. And um, 
this one, when I have the shift, it has a lot harder feel. Now, in comparison, when I have the tactile stuff going, it even though this is smaller and you think you'd feel more vibrations through it, I feel less in the Husenfeld one than I do this one. And, uh, and probably just because of how the components are in here. Uh, this is eating up a lot more energy inside uh, and dampening the vibrations I would get. Uh, probably from uh, maybe the bushings or whatever that's in there, the stop that's in there. So uh, this one I actually feel feel the vibrations coming up more through there for the engine vibes because everything's metal to metal and it transfers up the handle uh, just fine. So, you know, comparison wise, you can't go wrong uh, with either one of them, or any all three of these actually, they're all great uh, in their own right. Uh, but I know I'll get asked this question, so I figured I would just add a comparison. The feel of the uh, AO Logs one feels better to me. It's not because it's the new one, because I've, I've banged through all these for you know this one for years and then uh so you'd think that would be my favorite one the the fanatic one uh if you just base it off of time but the sequ the sequential one of the husenfeld had been my favorite and i actually didn't think i would care for the AO logs actually at first i'm like ah the husenfeld is actually really good i like it a lot uh, but some of my subscribers had suggested it to me and so i took them up on it and contacted them and got one and uh <laughs> I am glad I did because it feels really good. I actually was going to do some sim racing last night and I had this out here on my bench and I didn't do sim racing because I didn't have this installed. So <laughs> let you know how much fun this thing is, uh, uh, how much I use the sequential shifter and uh, this just adds a lot more of the immersion factor of how positive it feels banging gears and it's actually more comfortable on my hand being this rounder profile so anyway that's about all i can say about this thing we got 36 minutes into the video i uh, will add the uh video of it coming apart during this whole talking session to minimize the time and as well as my driving but i i'll sum this all up the AO logs sequential shifter is a highly uh, high quality piece of equipment. Uh, everything is precision made, uh, high tolerances together. Uh, I like the feeling that they produced out of this shifter compared to the other ones. I like it a lot more than the other shifters. I think the feel you get out of a shifter is is the biggest thing. Not necessarily how much force. I mean, it's it, the force coupled with the feeling that you get. The positive hit that you get at the end of the shifts is money. That's the that's the thing that I think as a gearhead uh, and other gearheads out there are looking for. And uh, this one actually provides it, uh, which I haven't had a shifter that the Husenfeld came really close to it. Uh, having that force, but if you went with a longer handle on the Husenfeld, uh, you know, it, it went away. Uh, this one being a little bit longer handle, I still have the same torque as this one with the shorter handle. So that kind of tells you this is actually putting out more force as well. Because um, my leverage arm is higher and I still get the same force as I do out of the Husenfeld. So that's actually a good comparison there too. And if you add a lower shifter handle and then it's going to just increase my output even more but i think they got a really good balance between uh the length of this handle the tactile feel that you get uh when you complete the shift whether you have headphones on or not and don't hear the actual sound doesn't matter you feel it and that's where it's at so anyway i hope you enjoyed it i hope this was thorough enough for y'all to make a informative decision about the AO log shifter. I was pleasantly surprised how well this is built and how, frankly, how well it felt to use. And uh, so, yeah, this is going to be on my rig for a long time. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to give it back, guys. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really like this shifter. So you'll see it in more videos. I plan on doing a lot more motion videos with the next level racing. And you'll see this up on my rig quite a bit uh, being used. So anyway, stay tuned the next time. Leave some comments, some questions. If I didn't cover something, I apologize. 
Uh, there's always going to be something I forget, and hopefully uh, this didn't take up too much of your time. Thank you for your time, and we will catch you next time on the track. I'm out.